In a previous video, we talked about change of basis matrices for vectors. Now we're going to talk about change of basis matrices for operators. But before we do that, let's review what we know about vectors. So we always have a vector space, V, and we'll assume it's a finite dimensional vector space. So it's n dimensional and it has a basis, B1 through Bn, consisting of n vectors. And then you have another basis, D1 through Dn. And you want to know how to convert from doing things with the B basis to doing things with the D basis or, or vice versa. So we construct a change of basis matrix, PDB. And the formula for that was take all of the B vectors and write their coordinates in the D basis. Package them together and you get this matrix. And then we had another matrix, which was the same with the roles of B and D reversed. We call that PBD. And those two matrices are inverses of each other. And the job of these change of basis matrices is to do a change of basis. PDB converts, take, you know, eats the coordinates in the B basis and gives you the coordinates in the D basis. PBD eats the coordinates in the D basis and gives you the coordinates in the B basis. So that's change of basis for vectors. And we had a picture for it. We had a picture that looked like this. Basically said that taking coordinates in the B basis makes our vector space look just like Rn. Taking the coordinates in the D basis makes it look just like Rn. But So the conversion back and forth is something that eats an n vector and spits out an n vector. That's an n by n matrix. PBD goes from D to B, read right to left. PDB goes from B to D. So much for vectors. Now let's talk about linear transformations, and in particular about operators. There's a, you know, for linear transformations in general, it's a bit more complicated because you have two different vector spaces and two sets of bases. That's all in the book. Let's just talk about operators where you have one vector space, and we like expressing, finding the matrix of the linear transformation with respect to the B basis, and the matrix of the linear transformation with respect to the D basis, and how are these two matrices related? And the answer is that you need to multiply by the change of basis matrix on both sides. And the way to remember that is that L sub D is really a shorthand for L D D. The input basis is D, and the output basis is D. You need a change of basis on one side having to do with the output basis. You need a change of basis on the other side having to do with the input basis. Now, we could say that you multiply by PBD on the right and PDB on, PBD on the left and PDB on the right. Of course, PDB is PBD inverse and PBD is PDB inverse. So there are several different forms of this equation, but they really all mean the same thing. The most common mistake in the world is that people write down a formula that looks just like the formula for change of basis for vectors, but it's wrong. The way that we do a change of basis for vectors is you multiply on one side by the change of basis matrix. The way you do it for operators is you need to multiply on both sides by the change of basis by the appropriate change of basis matrix. And of course, that's LB in terms of LD. You can go the other way around, just reverse the roles of B and D throughout. Okay, so why does this work? Here's an elaborate picture of what's going on. We've got our vector space. And, it's, and our operator sends V to itself. If we work just with stuff in the B basis, we say, hey, working in the B basis, we have coordinates in the B basis, and output coordinates in the B basis, and there's a matrix L sub B that takes you from one to the other. Likewise, if we work with the D basis, we're looking at the red part of this diagram. Maybe I should draw two lines here. Okay. The blue part shows what happens in the B basis. The red part shows what happens in the D basis. Okay. 
or you can do the same diagram looking at individual vectors. What you've got is some vector sitting in this abstract vector space, let's call the vector V, and you can look at its coordinates in the B basis, the coordinates of the output L of V in the B basis, see V goes to L of V and it has coordinates, the coordinates of the output in the D basis, the coordinates of the input in the D basis. And we are going to see how is the coordinates of the output in the D basis related to the coordinates of the input in the D basis. Let's do it one step at a time. The output in the D basis is the output in the B basis times the change of basis matrix. That's what the change of basis matrix does. It converts the coordinates of a vector in the B basis to the coordinates of the vector in the D basis. But that's the matrix of L in the B basis times the input in the B basis. You see, the matrix of L in the B basis is what takes input in the B basis to output in the B basis. And that's what we've written down here. Finally, the input in the B basis is a change of basis matrix times the input in the D basis. So if you want to start with the coordinates in the D base, input coordinates in the D basis, and get the output coordinates in the D basis, you first apply PBD, then you apply LB, then you apply PDB. First PBD, then LB, then PDB. On the other hand, if we were going straight across, we would have said, oh, L on the D basis is the machine that takes inputs in the D basis and gives you outputs in the D basis. So this product of three matrices must be L in the D basis. And there you have it. Okay, so L on the D basis is given like this, or you can do the reverse. Oh, so it's right. L on the D basis is given as this product, or you could just as well write L on the B basis. You could just write the same formula with roles reversed. PBD, LD, PDB. And that's what we had in the first page. Okay. That's all for now.